This is the Pearson Edexcel IAL, uh, Mathematics Pure Math, P2. Um, this video is going to be doing question seven, geometric, which deals with geometric sequences from January 2023. Right. Uh, question seven, a geometric series has uh, term one A and a common ratio R. R has to be larger than zero. The following information is given. The third term is 20. The fifth term is 12.8. Okay. A. Number seven. A. Show that R equals 0 0.8. Well, we know that the first term... Let's look at the information that's given. Okay, so first term is A. Well, that doesn't give us anything A and R. That's just normal geometric stuff. So we know that U3 is going to equal to 20. But we also know that UN for a geometric um, pattern sequence is equal A times R to the power of N minus 1. So that means that we can say that U3 um, is equal to AR2, it's N minus one, or N is three. Now the next piece of information that was given is U5 by the same logic is equal to 12.8 and is also equal to AR4. Let's see, what can we do with, with this information? Well, we want to show what R is. We want to show what R is. Usually in these types of questions, what I would do is I would, uh, you know, you'd start figuring out sort of some sort of equation. So you'd say, well, R over R must be, we know that R2 uh, divided by R1. That doesn't make any sense. Um, we know there's a common ratio. Uh, so we could, if we had A, we, we could start working with it. We don't have A here. So we have to kind of use a logic approach. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this isn't my favorite type of question. You have to have to use the answer in the question. So if R was equal to 0 0.8, then and U3 is equal to 20, then we could get to U4 by timesing our um our u3 by uh, we could get to our u4 by timesing u3 by another r um, because well u3 was a times r times r so u4 will be a times r times r times r um yeah, so we could say 20 times another R. So that will be 20 times 0 0.8. If this was, if R was 0 0.8, this would be true. And U4, if you put that in the calculator, that should get to 16. So, so far that doesn't tell us, that doesn't prove anything. If we do it one more time, and we land on the correct U5, then we have proven it. Okay, so, well, U5 is going to be 20 times another R. And this is going to be 20 times another R is, uh, excuse me, not 20, 16. Hmm. We want to G4 times another R, 16. Okay, 16 times by 0 0.8. Um, Put that in the calculator quickly. That gives us 12.8, which is correct. That's the 
12.8 is our correct U5. So therefore we can conclude that R is in fact 0 0.8 because we by trial and error. Again, that's not my favorite type of question. I don't like it when they don't use sort of algebra, they kind of use some sort of fuzzy logics. Okay. But it all we get there in the end. Moving on to B. B says, well, what is A? Well, we know that U3 is not only 20, but it's also A R squared. Uh, so it's A times R R, which we proved to the power of two. And we know that U5 is not only 12.8, but it's also A times R, which is now 0 0.8 to the power of four. Okay. Um, you, you, you've only got one unknown in both these cases, so you could use either of them. Uh, let's use U3. So we know that 20 is equal to A times 0 0.8 to the power of two. There's only one unknown now, so we can divide both sides by 0 0.8 to, to the power of two. Cancels out on the right-hand side. So A will be equal to 20 over 0 0.8 to the power of 2, which is 125 divided by 4. And in decimal form, that's 31.25. Okay, that was number B. Number C um, gives us some extra information. It's given that the sum to the first n term, so sum to n, is going to be greater than 156. So C, um, sum to n is larger than 156. And then the question says, uh, find the smallest possible value of n. OK. Um, Hmm. Well, let's start with the SN formula. So for geometric, um, we have the SN formula, which is the sum to N, adding all the terms together, is 1 minus Rn all over 1 minus R. We have our A value now. It's 31.25, our previous question, so we can work out our SN. We have A and we have R. Our R was 0 0.8. So we know that SN has to be larger than something in the A value. It's going to be 31.25, 1 minus 0 0.8 to the power of N. But we don't know what N is. That's what we're trying to solve. Um, all over 1 minus R. So it's 1 minus 0 0.8. Okay. We also know that SN is larger than 156. So this is actually an incorrect statement here. We know this was what SN was equal to. So we know 31.25, one minus 0 0.8 to the power of N all over one minus 0 0.8. Uh, must be larger than 156. Okay. Um, let's see what happens. Well, first thing I would do here is divide 156 uh, by 2, uh, 0 0.2. Um, hmm. Uh, not divide times. Okay, let's do. Let's work it through very slowly. So thirty-one point two five, one minus zero point eight half two, one minus uh, zero point eight, zero point two. So we times both sides by zero point two. One hundred and fifty-six times by zero point two. 
we get 156 over five. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it in that form for now. 31.25, one minus 0 0.8 squared. Okay. Now, next thing we wanna, backwards bod mass, backwards bod mass. So we did the divide. Now we doing multiplication. We're gonna divide by 31.25, divide both sides by 31.25. And we get one minus 0 0.8. The side cancels out. Squared is all larger than Mm, 624 over 620. Oh, that's not a six, 625. Okay, nearly there. Uh, next step, start the backwards bottom mass again. We minus one on both sides. Gets rid of the one. One is gone. We have negative 0 0.8 to the power of 2. OK, now when we divide by minus 1, it's li uh, linear inequality is the signs. Somewhere along the line, my n changed into a 2. <laughs> Interesting times. All of these 2s are n's. Self-checking, very good as long as you do it before the end. Okay. <laughs> Must be an end. Must be. Right. Has to be an unknown. If you don't, uh, you don't have an unknown, none of this makes any sense. Um, if you're dividing through by a linear, if you're dividing a linear inequality or by negative one, then the inequality sign flips around. If you divide by negative, or times by negative, so 0 0.8 to the power of n. Um, 124 over 125 minus 1 is going to be 1 over, because this would be, uh, sorry, 625 over 625 is 1. So you minus, you're going to end up with just negative 1 left over. And so... Uh, I should do that in a separate step, but the negative one times by a negative would be positive again. So we'd end up with one over 625 over here. Okay, let me use our log law, a to the power of b, if a to the power of b equals c, then log a c is equal to b. So we are going this direction this time. Okay. So uh, we have, Log a to power of a c equals b. And just to making sure that I get my n on the correct side of the n would end up this side, okay. Log of 0 0.8 and 1 over 625. I put this in the calculator, log 0 0.8 and n going to be larger than keeping that the same way around. Just move the n on to the other side now. This part, just make sure you get your n in the same. Uh, n needs to go this side. <laughs> okay. Um, 28.8502 and so on. So go back to the question. Ask, they asked for, oh, where is it? Find the smallest possible value of n. Okay. So the smallest possible value of n, if n is larger than this, is uh, 29. And I think that concludes this fantastic question seven of the 2023 January paper two, P2.